Okay, good morning and welcome to a regular meeting of a panel of utility commissioners and staff of the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority or PIRA held today, Wednesday, October 6, 2021 at 10 a.m. by remote teleconference. My name is Chairman Marissa Gillette and I'm joined virtually today by my colleagues, the Vice Chairman Jack Bukowski and Commissioner Michael Karen, along with a number of authority staff. We have a regular calendar and a consent calendar in front of us today. Uh, we have three items on today's regular calendar, um, so we'll turn to that first. Uh, first up is docket number 210802, which is the Annual Residential Renewable Energy Tariff Program Review and Rate Setting. Uh, this is an interim decision today, and it will turn to uh, Authority Staff Jake Reiner to present the uh, decision for the panel's consideration, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning to the commissioners. Uh, today's decision in docket number 21-08-02, uh, the authority establishes a methodology to calculate tariff rates for residential customers of the state's electric distribution companies installing renewable energy systems and approves the tariff rates for project applications received by the EDCs in calendar year 2022. The authority also approves with modification documents proposed by the EDCs to administer the program associated with the tariffs, the residential tariff program. This decision follows the authority's February 10th, 2021 decision in docket number 20-07-01, establishing the program pursuant to Public Act 19-35, as codified in section 16-244Z of the General Statutes of Connecticut, which directed PURA to establish tariffs for each EDC to be effective January 2022 through December 2027. The authority initiated this proceeding on May 24, 2021, and subsequently requested DACA participants submit models to calculate the residential tariff rates. Following submission of models, the authority held a technical meeting to discuss the tariff rate calculation methodology. The authority then requested written comments and held a technical meeting to discuss data inputs to be used in setting the tariff rates for calendar year 2022. Finally, the authority received the EDC's proposed program documents, as well as comments from stakeholders proposing certain modifications. The authority then issued a proposed interim decision on September 21st and received written exceptions on September 28th. Today's decision, if adopted, would establish a methodology to calculate the residential renewable energy tariff rates for all six program years in an effort to at least maintain historical residential solar deployment levels of approximately 50 to 60 megawatts annually. For 2022, customers of both EDCs can opt for a buy all tariff rate of 29.43 cents per kilowatt hour for the purchase of all energy and renewable energy certificates. Customers of United Illuminating can opt for a monthly netting tariff to be compensated at the applicable retail rate for the purchase of energy produced and not consumed, while Eversource customers opting for the monthly netting tariff will receive the retail rate plus compensation for renewable energy certificates equal to 3.18 cents per kilowatt hour. Further, in support of the authority's goal to deploy 40% of residential renewable energy systems in low-income households and economically distressed communities, eligible low-income customers of each EDC will receive an additional 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour under both tariffs, while customers that live in distressed municipalities that otherwise do not qualify as low-income will receive an additional 1.25 cents per kilowatt hour. Finally, in today's decision, the authority approves the EDC's program manual and other program documents that will guide their administration of the program and authorizes customer disclosure forms and renewable energy contractor audit processes that will ensure robust customer protections and a smooth program launch. If adopted, this decision would represent an important step in supporting the sustained and equitable development of the state's residential renewable energy industry. Staff recommends approval. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. Is there a motion? I move adoption, Madam Chairman. Second, Madam Chairman. Thank you. The item has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, no questions or comments. We will uh, take the roll. Mr. Bumpin, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. Docket number 210802 has been adopted. We'll turn next to docket number 210808, the petition to establish a docket pertaining to Public Act 21-162, an act concerning the solicitation of new fuel cell electricity generation projects. I will turn to authority staff, Mr. Jeff Floyd, uh, to present today's uh, decision for the panel's consideration. 
Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. This docket was conducted pursuant to General Statutes of Connecticut Section 16-244Y, which requires the electric distribution companies to conduct a competitive procurement to acquire new fuel cell uh, require, I'm sorry, which requires the electric distribution companies to conduct a competitive procurement to acquire new fuel cell generation and submit on or before January 1st, 2022 selected projects to the authority for review. By the way of background, Eversource and UI filed a proposed tariff with the authority on August 3rd, 2021. The authority considered written comments from stakeholders, including fuel cell companies regarding the proposed tariff and then issued a proposed interim decision. The authority then received written exceptions and heard oral arguments. In this interim decision, the authority approves an electric distribution company tariff as required by section 16-244Y to be used by the electric distribution companies to procure renewable energy credits from approved new fuel cell generators. The, this interim decision addresses concerns raised by fuel cell companies in their written exceptions regarding the desirability of the solicitation process to take into account the different revenue needs of various types of eligible fuel cell projects. To address this concern about projects' different revenue needs, the interim decision directs the electric distribution companies to evaluate bids using a total compensation methodology. The interim decision approves the proposed tariff with some modifications intended to clarify project eligibility and to cl clarify that the project's purchase price for renewable energy credits is, selected, is the selected bid price. With that, I recommend adopting this interim decision to the panel. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Is there a motion? I move adoption. Second. Thank you. The item has been regularly moved and seconded. Uh, does the panel have any questions or comments before we take the vote? Madam Chairman. Please. Madam Chairman, I would just note that in this docket, uh, some of the issues that came up through uh, written exceptions and uh, oral arguments uh, this week uh, have been incorporated into the uh, docket as presented and uh, fully supported. Thank you, Commissioner Karen. I concur. So uh, we will take the vote, please. Mr. Bumpin. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The decision has been adopted. I should specify the interim decision as we will await the solicitation results. Um, so uh, thank you very much. We will move to Docket number 210905, the assessment of civil penalty against Norbert E. Mitchell Company, Inc. for pipeline safety violations. We will turn to Mr. Kevin Dowling with authority staff to present today's decision. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, everyone. Um, as the commissioners are aware, in addition to the natural gas company facilities in the state, uh, there are certain propane distribution systems that fall under the safety jurisdiction of the gas pipeline safety unit. Uh, the Mitchell company has been in business for more than 70 years uh, and they operate approximately 19 propane distribution systems that fall under the GPSU's safety jurisdiction. Um, they serve customers in Western Connecticut and Southeastern New York. Um, the GPSU has been working with Mitchell for about eight years uh, with inspections on record as early as 2013. Um, from May 29, 2020 through June 8, 2020, uh, the GPSU performed safety inspections at six systems operated by Mitchell in Dinbury, New Fairfield, and Reading, Connecticut. Uh, 17 violations of the pipeline safety standards were identified during those inspections, uh, and they were communicated to the company um, through Notice of Probable Violation Number 2020-012 on June 30, 2020. Uh, from May 27, 21 through July 7, 21, the GPSU completed follow-up inspections at the locations from the NOPV. Um, the follow-up inspections found that 10 violations still remained outstanding uh, from the original NOPV. In addition, from July 20, 21 through July 21, 2021, 
uh, the GPSU performed safety inspections at five additional systems in New Milford, Connecticut. 15 additional violations of the pipeline safety standards were identified during those inspections. Mitchell's been receptive to the GPSU's feedback, including inviting the GPSU to present to personnel during training and hiring a new employee to help with training and compliance. Despite these apparent efforts, issues with Mitchell's facilities are not being corrected in a timely manner. It is especially troubling that issues identified in NOPV 2020-012 were not corrected almost one year later. If this decision is adopted, Mitchell would be ordered to correct the outstanding violations within 60 days and would be assessed a civil penalty of $8,000. The civil penalty is based on Mitchell's safety history and past precedent for similar violations. I recommend this decision for adoption. Thank you, Mr. Dowling. Is there a motion? I move adoption. Second. Thank you, commissioners. Um, the docket has been regularly moved and seconded. There are no questions or comments. I would ask that we take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner mm -hmm. Karen? Yes. Thank you. The decision has been adopted. That concludes our regular calendar. So we will next turn to our consent calendar. Uh, our consent calendar today has 11 items on it. So I would seek a motion with respect to the consent calendar, please. I'm Chairman, I move adoption of today's consent calendar items one through 11. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? I will second it. Thank you. Uh, the consent calendar has been regularly moved and seconded. There are no questions or comments. Can we take the roll, please? Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Excellent. The consent calendar has been adopted in full. Uh, in that case, we have reached the end of today's agenda for the regular meeting. Uh, we will adjourn and reconvene um, for the next regular meeting next Wednesday, October 13th at 10 a.m., also by remote teleconference. Thank you. Have a great day.